Rich Gonzalez, along with Jason Eichelberger here at the 2018 Safe Cross Country Championships at the Riverside Championship Course. It was a day of favorites doing the job. All 10 team favorites ended up winning today, eight of them by a very large margin, most cases 50 points or more. There were actually two close races in the Division Three boys, came down to a one-point decision, and also very close in Division Five girls, where it was within 10 points. Uh, I mentioned as far as the favorites doing the job, also individually, the top times of the day, Tori Gaetan of Great Oak, she was our Division One girls champion, winning in 16.42.2. On the boys' side, our Division Two champion, Nico Young of Newberry Park, winning in 14. 24.2 once again an all-time team time course record uh, no real upsets of, of any sort a uh, couple of in, couple of favorites had some problems individually because of the conditions wasn't hot but you can tell some kids looked a little bit dehydrated actually we also had a couple of major spills uh, in a couple of races and we'll discuss that briefly uh, Jason from your arena match point what were some of the big highlights that took out to you well you know I have to start obviously with the reigning dynasty here in the southern section and pretty much in the state you know Great Oak will start on the girls side this is their seventh consecutive southern section championship for D1 obviously unparalleled there um, this is the ninth title in 10 years. The train just keeps on going. doesn't matter who's leading it. It just continues to be successful. Um, what would, happened that 10th year? That's what I want to know. <laughs> uh, San Clemente, I think, was the <laughs> one that came through there. But uh, it, D2, uh, we have Claremont winning for the third year in a row, uh, being led by the freshman, Maddie Coles, a spectacular performance by her. Um, didn't see it coming, but it was refreshing to kind of see that last mile there, which really made a difference for her. Um, Division three, uh, we had Sarah Scholes, who might have had one of the more uplifting stories. A, a bunch of uplifting stories with uh, you know all the fires and things. Wasn't able to really train this week. Had some had to go to different places to really get a good workout in. Comes out here and basically goes wire to wire there. Um, also have Palos Verdes in Division three, winning their sixth uh, Southern Section Championship in the last ten years. Definitely kind of asserting their dominance there. Things that really stood out to me regarding a couple of a couple of spills we mentioned in the Division One boys race, the very first race of the day, Great Oak, the heavy team title favorite, come out on the first try of the race. There was a spill that brought him back for a second try. On the second try, there was another spill. There was no recall. Two kids from Great Oak went down. They ended up being by the time they got up at the very back of the pack. <laughs> One of those two was Tyler Tickner, the pre-race favorite. So he started from the very back, battled up. Finishing second overall, still ran great. Not to mention the fact that Great Oak was already two guys down. There were two individuals coming off injuries that weren't in the race, and one of those may not be back, may, might be an action at the state meet. But for them to be missing individuals, to have that spill early on, and to still come back is very impressive. Also in the Division Three boys race, very similar. 400 meters in, Wade Nigren went down for Palos Verdes. He got trampled. It's a you can see the video. He actually was in a pretty scary situation. Got up again, dead last in the race. Battled back. He ended up being the team's last scorer, and they won by one point. <laughs> so big, so clutch. And I think that kind of underscores this, the whole meaning of the sport. You fall down, you get back up. You can still make a difference. To go from the yeah. back of the pack all the way to second in the case of Tyler Tickner. Ironically enough, you know, Great Oak winning their fourth title in a row. Their titles, victories have averaged 41 points. They win today by 43. So they're following along in the pattern that they've set of dominance there. And as you said, um, in Division Three, one point makes a big difference. And you know, to battle back after such a scary situation just shows the heart and the soul that you need to compete in the sport. I think the teams that really stood out to me, one of them had to be Denny Hill's boys. Yes. They're very, very good this year. And they've had some great races, but today they really one through five really came through where they basically passed up a little bit a West Ranch team that had been showing well recently. And we're talking about the, the, the Great Oaks, the Dana Hillses, the Newberry Parks, and a few others. We're talking not, not just state titles, but also in that NXN pitcher. On the girls' side, I mean, we're, lucky, we're talking about obviously Great Oak. Uh, two teams that were very close together coming in on paper were Vista Marietta in Claremont, albeit in different races. We saw that order flip-flop just a little bit, but those three teams right now are the leading contenders for NXN bursts going down the road. So, very impressive. And it'll be interesting to see how can bounce back and have the success next weekend when obviously things will be ratcheted up even another notch in the year. The real big difference at this point in the season is experience. And we have a lot of teams that maybe had a hiccup today but oftentimes it's teams that are at this level for the first time and they have a big day today, but now the target's on their back and trying to 
repeat that on the biggest stage next week is so much tougher, and that's when experience really comes into play. So it'll be interesting. During the course of the week, we'll, we'll tune back in, uh, actually on Friday, uh, from the state meet with a bit of a preview of the meet. Uh, should be some great action from all around. Obviously, we've had some issues with fires and smoke quality around the state. If you have not heard, the Central Coast section finals have been pushed back to tomorrow to a Sunday. North Coast section, the plan is to run on Tuesday. If they cannot get that meeting on Tuesday, a three-person committee is going to go ahead and determine who the qualifiers are for that state meet. Obviously an unprecedented situation, a tough situation for everybody involved. Um, you know, you, you just kind of go back to the old saying that, you know, making the best of a bad situation. I think that's the case here. Um, obviously conditions in the North Coast section and the Central Coast section very bad at the moment. And, you know, CIF is trying to exhaust every option to make sure those kids are not running in dangerous conditions. So it'll be interesting to see how those play out and how it impacts results next weekend at Woodward Park. Yeah, definitely. All from around the state, it's just a very, really depressing situation. One of the coaches from Northern California, who's a teacher, he mentioned to me in his classroom during the week, there was a haze in his classroom because of the smoke coming in. He's just a pretty bad situation. But the kids are adapting. Kids are running indoors, on treadmills, at, at, at local fitness clubs, so forth. So they're adapting. It should be for, as usual, when all said and done, a very exciting California State meet. Always looking forward to it. Uh, you get to see the best of the best, and obviously when it's go time, it's go time. All right. For Jason Eichelberger, this is Rich Gonzalez from Prep Caltrack. We will see you in Fresno.